You join me today on the top of a misty headland on the Devon coast as we look at a strange looking piece of radio infrastructure. This is Berry Head, the home of the Berry Head National Air Traffic Services DVOR. A DVOR or Doppler Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Range is a navigational aid used in aviation to provide pilots with accurate and reliable information about their aircraft's position and heading. There are two types of VOR aids, CVOR which is a conventional VOR and DVOR which is a Doppler VOR. DVOR is the further development of the CVOR, providing improved signal quality and accuracy compared to CVORs at demanding locations where the geographical conditions are difficult using the Doppler effect. They're usually installed at airports and en route locations. Now, don't worry, we're not trespassing here. In fact, the DVOR at Berry Head is situated on a walking path and is publicly accessible, so much so that you can actually walk underneath this giant structure. The main purpose of a DVOR such as this is to provide pilots with a reference point for navigation. It helps them determine their aircraft's radial position relative to the DVOR station, which is crucial for accurate navigation and instrument approaches. You can see a brick building below that houses the transmitting equipment as well as the power supply, and this caged stairway up the side leads to the top of the array for maintenance. A DVOR operates based on the principle of the Doppler effect. It emits an electrically rotating radio signal in the VHF frequency range between 108 and 118 MHz. This means the array itself doesn't physically rotate. They use a circular array of typically 48 omnidirectional antennas and no moving parts. The active antenna is moved around the circular array electronically to create the Doppler effect, the signal is received by the aircraft's onboard navigation equipment. The frequency of the signal changes slightly depending on the aircraft's position relative to the DVOR station. The station generates the radio signal which is then transmitted through the antenna array. The receiver on the aircraft picks up the signal and calculates the aircraft position based on the frequency shift caused by the Doppler effect. The DVOR signal is transmitted in a 360 degree pattern, allowing pilots to receive information from any direction. The signal consists of two components, the carrier wave and the variable audio tone. The carrier wave provides the reference signal, while the audio tone varies in frequency to indicate the aircraft's radial position. The DVOR signal is divided into 360 radials, each representing a specific direction from the DVOR station. The bearing is the reciprocal of the radial and represents the direction from the aircraft to the DVOR station. Aircraft are equipped with instruments to interpret the DVOR signal and display the aircraft's position and heading. The most common instrument is the VOR indicator which displays the aircraft radial position relative to the station. Other instruments such as the Horizontal Situation Indicator or HSI can integrate DVOR information with other navigational aids for more comprehensive navigation. DVOR systems are known for their accuracy and reliability. They provide precise information about the aircraft's position and heading, allowing pilots to navigate with confidence. However, like any other navigational aid, DVOR signals can be affected by atmospheric conditions, terrain and other factors, which pilots must take into account. Doppler VOR beacons are inherently more accurate than conventional VORs because they're less affected by reflections from hills and buildings. Many DVOR stations are also equipped with Distance Measuring Equipment, or DME, which provides additional information about the aircraft's distance from the station. DVOR DME systems combine the benefits of both navigational aids, enhancing situational awareness for pilots. Further along the head we come to Berryhead Lighthouse and a marine radio mast and former watchtower. The old lookout station on Berry Head was closed when the new centre opened in Brixham Harbour in 1984. This old station is built within the walls of the magazine of the fortress, built during the time of the Napoleonic Wars. The mast is home to a number of marine aerials for the Falmouth Coast Guard safety information broadcast on Marine Channel 63 and the automatic identification system. There's also a weather station on the site, this unidentified dipole antenna, and at the very top of the mast, a marine related direction finding array.
As night falls and the red aircraft warning light on the mast lights up and the stars come out over the DVOR, another magnificent structure on Berry Head comes to life. This is the Berry Head Lighthouse, built by Trinity House in 1906 as part of a chain of south coast beacons. It sits 5 metres tall but 58 metres above the sea below and has a dazzling light with an intensity of 4200 candela that reaches 19 nautical miles out across the water. The lighthouse was converted to unwatched acetylene operation in 1921 and modernised and converted to mains electricity in 1994 and is one of the smallest in the British Isles. In 2019, the optic and lamp were removed and replaced with a pair of self-contained LED lanterns, with one serving as the main lamp and the other as a standby. The lighthouse is now monitored and controlled from Trinity House's planning centre in Harwich in Essex. How? Well, do you see that pair of orange warning lights in the distance over Tor Bay? That's Beacon Hill over at Malden, and there's a telemetry link from the lighthouse directly over to that mast, which eventually leads back to Essex. And finally, if we take a running jump over the cliff edge, you can see the reason why the lighthouse on Berry Head is so important. Thank you.